Carissa. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, I should know if no, the no, year no, or no, that's, that's, that's my calendar idea. Key and cheap, right? Because you, you've got that, that blanket you put around it, and every month is circled. That's my calendar idea. So I need 12 months. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this great day that you've given to us, a special day in our hearts, the day that we celebrate the gift of the Savior Jesus. Lord, as we gather this morning and uh, as we gather as the body of Christ, would uh, our worship and our reflection upon the Word of God be pleasing in your sight today. Lord, we do pray for uh, so many of our friends uh, who would love to be with us here today. But, uh, but cannot. We think of those especially who are enduring difficulty and, and uh, who are receiving care, maybe at home or, or even in the hospital. We, we lift them up before you, our dear brothers and sisters in the Lord. And we pray for your spirit to, to rest upon them. We pray for your encouragement uh, to, to fill their hearts. And that uh, even this day, as we celebrate the birth of our Savior Jesus, that their hearts would be overflowed with joy in just the reflection of the gift that was given so that we might have forgiveness of sins and a relationship with you, God. Now, Father, as we gather this morning in your house and we gather to bring our worship before you and to spend time in your word, would you be pleased with the gathering that we uh, have here today? Would you be pleased with the love that we share one for another and the worship that we bring before you? We pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. All right. Hey, would you rise and, and join us in worship? <laughs>
Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Glad everybody's here. We beat the rain so far. Maybe we can get home before it starts, before we get blown away. Don't forget to plug your devices in. I don't want anybody to have to, you know, go through withdrawals and not being able to use their phones, okay? <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the reason for this season, and that is the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But without this day, without this celebration, without his birth, we'd be lost. There'd be no hope for us. But because of this day and because of his birth, we do have a hope. We thank you for him. We thank you for you, Father, that you loved us so much that you would send your son to earth to take on the sins of the world so that we could have eternal life. Come now and lead Pastor Tim as he brings the word. May you bless him and bless the time in his word, us to get back twofold to hear from you, Lord. We thank you for all you do. We pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Right, get it. No treats. Let's go. Not until after the sermon. Come on. Come on. Me. Depends on how good she is. He spoils her. That's the problem. You know? it's like radar. I spoil all of my four-legged friends who come and visit me at church. It's a lonely place during the week. Um, <laughs> Uh, hey, good morning. Merry Christmas. It's my joy to be here with you again. I've always looked forward to this service because I get to see all of your pajamas and what you people wear at night and uh, anything nobody's watching. Um, hey, uh, this morning I'd love to uh, look again. This is obviously a Christmas morning and not going to be a, 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 a message that you've never heard before, but maybe a reflection that we need to, uh, to receive once again. And so this morning we're going to be talking about the greatest announcement. Um, so I have a picture here of, uh, of this is the backdrop, background on my, on my laptop, right? Uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, just to be fair, Jolie's not my first grandchild. She's not even my second grandchild. But uh, as many of you know, with, um, with Fletcher and Arrow, uh, Marissa and Zach had some difficulty conceiving. And so their arrival wasn't a surprise, right? It wasn't a, a, a big announcement. And with, uh, with baby Jolie... Uh, there was a great announcement and the big reveal down in, in Disney. This is where that took place. Uh, and as many of you know, there's uh, recently been a, another big announcement. Jolie's going to be a big sister. All right, look at her. She's ready to be a big sister, right? Look at her. That girl's adorable. Um, but uh, uh, big announcements aren't, aren't new. Uh, and if, if uh, some of our church family are over 75, uh, Bob Bisbee, and um, and you might uh, you might remember uh, the the big announcement of the the end of World War II, right? If you're over 57, you might remember the uh, the big announcement with the uh, assassination of JFK. And if you're uh, 19, 20 years old uh, or older, uh, you might remember the, the announcement with the terror attack on 1911. And uh, and if you're here today. Uh, maybe other than Jolie, uh, you'll remember election night, right? Election night, every four years, Americans stay up late and we watch the vote of the nation come in, right? And so every year, there's, there's tons of great announcements that uh, have been made, some good, some bad, uh, but today we're looking at, at the greatest announcement, which just begs the question, if something is going to be the greatest announcement, what, what would have to be included in that? What would that have to entail? And so I think two things. If something's going to be the greatest announcement, it has to be a timeless truth, a timeless res, uh, revelation, right? Uh, something that wasn't just for those folks present at that time. And I think another thing, it would have to be, it'd have to be worldwide. It'd have to be a global announcement. It couldn't just be for a certain group at a certain place. And so for something to be the greatest announcement, it would have to be an announcement that impacted the lives of all people everywhere at all times. And, uh, and I think that, that that's what makes this announcement the, the greatest announcement ever. Um, uh, if you think about it, without this announcement, uh, there wouldn't be a Christmas. All right? Without this great announcement, there wouldn't be Christmas. Think if, if Jesus just arrived upon the scene in maybe uh, uh, Luke chapter 3 with his baptism, where he's identified with, with mankind, 
And you hear John the Baptist point him out as he comes through the crowd. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And you hear the announcement, the great announcement from God the Father in heaven. This is my son whom I am well pleased. Uh, or Jesus himself as he takes the, the pulpit in, uh, in Luke chapter 4 and says, The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and, re and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And so without this great announcement, there really wouldn't be a Christmas like we know it. Now, we might as Christians celebrate some of those other events that did take place with the coming of God, but, but there wouldn't be a Christmas like, like we've come to, to know and to love. There wouldn't be Christmas trees and Christmas lights all over the place and all of the, the hubbub, the Christmas specials that start in October, right? Um, maybe worst of all, there wouldn't be Christmas cookies and, and eggnog, right? <laughs> we, eggnog, the, the, the low-calorie drink, right? Can you imagine, right, uh, uh, not having a Christmas. Uh, by the way, I found this out the other day, and I'm sure you're probably not going to be surprised by this, uh, but, uh, but the men in, in the room, men, we would be better off uh, health-wise if there wasn't all of this Christmas hubbub, right? We'd be better off health-wise if all of this Christmas hubbub didn't take place. Uh, and, and here's why. A British psychologist, this is a few years old now, this, this study that he did is, is at least five years old. All right? he, he did a study, he asked for volunteers. Uh, he had volunteers between 22 and 79. He invited some men to come, and they put blood pressure uh, monitors on these men, and they said, here's what you have to do. The day before Christmas, you have to shop in the mall and you have to get all of your shopping done in the mall on the day before Christmas. No shopping online, no shopping in advance. It all has to be done in the mall. And what they found when they monitored those men's blood pressure, they said that the average man's blood pressure shot up to what you would see in a fighter pilot going into combat. <laughs> True story. Uh, well, they did the same test with women. And they test their blood pressure and sent them in to fight at the mall for the gifts and all of that last minute. And you know what? Blood pressure never moved. Right? <laughs> blood pressure never moved. Proving two things. Christmas is hazardous for the health of men. And once and for all, who the stronger sex is. Right? Right? Blood pressure never moved. Right? Um, we certainly couldn't imagine an America without, uh, without Christmas. 95% of Americans celebrate Christmas. Even uh, non-religious people, 80% of non-religious people who don't even believe that there's a God celebrate Christmas. We couldn't imagine a Christmas or a, a, a nation without Christmas. And so uh, let's go back to, to, new, to 2,000 years ago, right? And, and if you brought your Bible with you this morning, we're going to be going to Luke chapter 2, right? Luke chapter 2. Luke is the, the third book. In the New Testament, the third gospel, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, and, and I want to show you what makes this greatest, this announcement the greatest announcement. Um, some things to be looking for here is, is who it was announced to, right? And who announced it. Uh, those are some of the things we'll be looking at. I'll be picking up in verse 8. Uh, I'll invite you to read along with me. In the same region, there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. You, know, you, can't, you can't read through the Christmas story without just bumping into angels everywhere, right? Uh, we see angels uh, telling Mary, you're going to conceive a child. You're going to be the mother of the Son of God. We see, we see an angel telling Joseph, who was engaged to Mary, hey, Mary's going to have a child. You're not the dad. Uh, we see an angel out here talking to the shepherds, right? What we told Mary and Joseph was going to happen has happened. Right? We see angels all over the place. And so this, this announcement, this greatest announcement, right? It was so huge. It was so critical that, uh, that God wanted this announcement to be 
heard and heard everywhere and, and, and heard clearly wherever it went. And so he sends this announcement by way of angel. So interesting to me that so many of his other announcements and such came by way of prophet. But this announcement comes by way of, of angels. All right? uh, now, you would think that if God wanted to make an announcement, he wanted it to be heard everywhere, and he wanted it to be heard clearly, right? And he, it was so special that he sent it by angels. Well, well naturally, then this great announcement would go to the greatest place. And if I were to ask you uh, where God would make the greatest announcement, you were living 2,000 years ago, uh, you would say, well, surely this announcement would come to Rome, right? Because Rome is the political powerhouse of the day. They were the, the capital of the day. It, it would come to Rome. So I'd say, no, nope, not Rome. All right, well, well, then it would come to Athens, right? Because Athens is the cultural uh, uh, center of the world in, in Jesus' day. No, no, not Athens. Well, give me a hint. Where would it come? It's going to come to the nation of Israel. Israel? Israel's not even their own country, right? They're, they're under the boot of, of, of Rome. Israel, that's a strange place. All right, so where in Israel? Oh, well, it would probably come to, uh, to Jerusalem because Jerusalem is the spiritual capital of the world, especially for, for the Jewish people. No, not Jerusalem. What? Then where? Bethlehem. What? Bethlehem? Right? Uh, Bethlehem is this no place place, right? The only thing that Bethlehem is ever known for is being the birthplace of King David. And that was a thousand years ago before Jesus comes on the scene. Bethlehem, that's where this great announcement is going to be made? That's unbelievable. Well, who's this announcement made to? Well, surely it would be made to, to Caesar because he's, he's, he's in charge of it. Well, no, not Caesar. Well, maybe one of the kings, like King Herod. No, not King Herod. One of the generals? Surely they have the military power of the day. No, not to the generals. Well, who? To shepherds. What? Shepherds? People on the absolute lowest rung of the social ladder? That's who the greatest announcement is coming to? In the smallest town and the smallest group of people? Unbelievable. Shepherds? Well, who are they? We don't know. They don't even have a name. They're never given a name. We don't know what their names are. We have no idea. So the lowest group of people, shepherds, receive the greatest announcement. We don't even know their names years and years later. I suppose that's maybe one of the questions we often say, well, when I get to heaven... Right? Uh, maybe that'll be one of the questions. Hey, hey, you shepherds out there, raise your hand. Who was present when the angel of the Lord came and gave the great announcement? And what is your name? Right? That would be amazing. Uh, well, what is this, this great announcement that the angel brings? And verse 10, we'll pick up. Uh, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people for today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now, there's, there's nothing really extraordinary about good news, right? We get good news on a, I hope you get good news on, on a relatively, you know, consistent basis. I think we do, we do receive a good amount of good news. And there's really nothing extraordinary about good news that brings great joy. Because I think if it's good news, it's probably bringing you great joy, right? Or else it really wouldn't be good news. And so good news that brings great joy. I mean, that's great and all, but it can't be the, the greatest announcement if it's just good news and, and it brings joy. So uh, uh, what made the difference with, with this announcement that comes here in, in verse 11? All right, what makes the difference is it's another, it's one thing to say that it's it, good news that brings great joy. It's a whole other ballpark, a whole other thing to say this is good news that brings great joy to all the people. Remember we said good news. If it's going to be the greatest announcement. It needs to be timeless. A timeless truth that is good for everybody. And it needs to be worldwide. And so here comes this greatest announcement. This is good news that brings great joy for all people. Alright. In this baby. Right. And who this baby is. And what this baby brings. Everyone on earth. Everyone on the planet and everyone who's ever lived will have will receive good news of great joy. 
All right, the, the coming of this baby meets the great needs and brings great joy for everyone on the planet. You say, well, well uh, you know, how, how do you know that? How do you know that this brings good news and great joy? Well, because of who this baby is, right? Who this baby is called. The angel says, in the city there is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now, let me tell you that, that this is a pretty big deal. Uh, one reason is, this is the only time in all of Scripture that these three titles are given together. All right? The only time in all of Scripture, Genesis to Revelation, Savior, Christ, Lord. It's the only time we'll ever find this announcement. And so that in itself is, is pretty awesome news. A, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this, this little baby is given these, these three titles. And, and it's, it is a very special it's a very special time, a very special announcement. Now, you've heard, I'm sure, as a matter of fact, I noticed in my house this morning, uh, we have a, a Christmas bag, you know, the gift bags. Uh, and it says on the side of it, it says, Christmas is the reason for the season. And that's true. Christmas is the reason for, for this glorious season. right? But my argument is, Christmas is the reason for every season. Christmas is the reason for absolutely every season. Uh, because I, I don't know what season of life that you're in, right? It might be a good one. It might be a bad one. I don't know. It might be a happy one or a sad one. I don't know. But, uh, but because of this baby, and who is God himself, right? Because of this baby and these three titles given to his baby, Christmas is the reason for every season, regardless of what season I find myself in. All right, and so I want to share with you three things that, that this baby uh, brings, three things that this announcement tells us about God. And the first is that God saves his people. All right, God saves his people. In, uh, in, in verse 11, uh, the angel says, For today in the city of David there has been born for you a Savior. Right? And so if, if the angel had just stopped right there and not said another word, just ascended back to heaven, went back into the heavenly realm, Right? That would be enough for us. Right? Today in Bethlehem, born for us a Savior. All right? That would be enough. Because uh, uh, if there is, by the way, s s such a thing as, as sin, and we are all sinners, right? what could be better news than the arrival of a Savior? All right? So the angel announces this is good news for all people. And that begs the question, doesn't it? How, how is this good news for all the people? How is the fact that the, the babe had been born in Bethlehem, a Savior born in Bethlehem, how is this good news for a Muslim? How is this good news for a Hindu? How is this good news for, for, for a Buddhist? How, how is this good news for a, a Jew or a Gentile? Let's just lump us all together, a Jew or a Gentile. How is this good news for the rich? Good news for the poor? How is this good news for every ethnic group on the planet today? Well, simply because the one thing that we all have in common is that we are all sinners saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ. And so the arrival of the Christ child, the arrival of the Savior, is good news for all, for everyone. And so that baby born in Bethlehem, he didn't come just to to show us how to live a righteous life before God, which he did. And he didn't come uh, just to, uh, to be a preacher and teacher of the word of God, which he did, right? But he came to be a savior. And we absolutely all need a savior. Whether you're the pope or the president or a homosexual, a heterosexual, right? Whether you're red, yellow, black, or white. I'm sure I crossed the line there somewhere. Um, where, whoever you are, right? We all need a savior, Right? And in this baby, we see that God saves us. Uh, God who says, uh, come to me through Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Uh, the second thing that we see in this baby is that it, it, it tells us about who God is, is that God keeps his promises. All right? God absolutely keeps his promises. In verse uh, 11, how do we know that? In verse 11, uh, today there's been born for you a savior who is Christ. All right? You know what the word Christ means? The word Christ is the, it means uh, anointed one. It's the New Testament word for the Old Testament word Messiah. 
right? And so uh, 2,000 years ago, this announcement that the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One had come would have filled your heart with joy. This was the announcement that you had been expecting and hoping for for generations, generations looking forward to this. Because the Old Testament, the Old Testament is not just a group of stories. The Old Testament is not just a history of the Jewish people. The Old Testament is God's word. And the thread that runs through the entirety of God's word is there is a promise. There was a promise that God would send a Savior, a Messiah, the Christ. And when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to keeping his promises, God's bad in a thousand. He's never missed one. God saves his people. This child was to be a savior of the world. And God keeps his promise. He's the Messiah, the one who would come to establish God's kingdom. And lastly, this baby tells us that God handles our problems. God handles our problems. In verse 11 again, uh, Today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Love that he includes the Lord in there, right? Uh, this baby in the manger is not just the Savior of the world. Uh, this baby in the manger, not just the Messiah, but he is the Lord of the universe. He is Christ the Lord. The word Lord, it, it, it signifies someone who is in complete control, who has complete authority, right? Someone who has everything under his feet, this is Christ the Lord. And I hope that you woke up this morning and that you wake up every morning and you say, thank you, Lord. I'm so thankful, Lord, that, that I have someone far above me who's calling the shots, right? I'm so thankful that, uh, that, that I'm not at the mercy of this world, this fickle world that changes back and forth all the time. I'm not at the mercy of interest rates. I'm not at the mercy of deficits. I'm not at the mercy of whoever's in leading this branch of government or that branch of government. I'm not at the mercy of the world today, right? I'm so thankful that I have a Lord, the Lord of the universe, who calls the shots, right? I have a Lord who will direct me in the right way to go. I have a Lord who will protect me in the right way to go. I have the Lord, the Lord who will correct me when I'm going the wrong way. I'm so thankful that I have a Lord the greatest announcement ever. For today in the city of David, there has been born to you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I'm so glad that I have one who is in complete control. Uh, the angel continues, this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. You know, of all of the announcements that have ever taken place, of all of the announcements that you and I have ever received that were full of good news and great joy, only one, there's only one that brings good news and great joy to all the people. The timeless revelation, the worldwide revelation that Jesus, the Savior, the Christ, the Lord is born. We remember that today, and I hope that you remember that, not just at Christmas time, but every day we can wake up and we say, thank you that I have a Lord who is in complete control. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you so much for the blessing of a Savior. Thank you for sending your Son to purchase us back from sin and death. He laid down his life as we reflected last night, uh, taking communion. Jesus gave his very life so that we could have forgiveness of sins in a brand new life. That we could have uh, a promise to be with you forever and ever. We're invited into the family of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, the promised one came. You fulfilled your promise that you would send one who would rescue us from sin and death. You would send one who would save the world. And so thank you for that. Lord, thank you for Jesus, our Lord, the one who knows us uh, deeper and better than any one of us even know ourselves. The one who rules and reigns over this world and all of creation. The one who loved us even unto death. 
Thank you, Father, for the gift of Jesus. Lord, help our hearts to be lifted up and encouraged every time we reflect upon the gift of our Savior as we longingly look forward to his return for his church. We pray these things with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Would you rise and join us in our closing song?
you get to go on the platform too. Ah, okay. Oh, one up on the platform. Crowd in on the platform. <laughs> Which one are you, Rogers or Negro? There. We'll share. Okay. We'll share. Crowd all in. Hey, you know, earlier I had to uh, I prayed for Pastor Tim because by default I'm the only deacon here. <laughs> but I love this part of being the only deacon here. It's the part that I can thank both of these families for their um, attention and hard work to the church over the year. And we can present them with a small gift. Um, especially Tara here who really thinks that the ride is needed so they can buy dog biscuits. Like that. <laughs> Apparently that's the only reason. Um, in the last couple of years, um, it's, been tough. it's been a tough year for these guys, for the whole family, for work. A lot of extra work and we do appreciate everything they've done and thank you for them. Um, in the past years, Tara's been the deliverer of the gift, but she's uh, on medication and she eats just about anything she can get her. So we wouldn't, you know, tempt her this year. Um, so we inquired to find a helper, and we did have to actually get a little angel that volunteered to come this year and uh, bring the presentation. But um, I'm not sure the weather could have held her up. And, you know, it's not easy for angels to get around strong winds and rain. So she should be here shortly. I'm not sure when, but I'm pretty sure she's on her way. Um, so shortly she should be here. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, here she comes now. Oh. Here she comes. For those who can't see, can't see that it's still Lee coming down. In her, yeah, she's walking and she's got a Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse Disney outfit on. And when she gets here, we'll actually get them in front of the camera so you can see her. Yes, you got It's a long walk, you know, for her. Yeah. She's yeah, doing obstacle courses, yeah. 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 She's got a smile. She's got a yeah. excited look on. Yeah. Definitely she have to turn around and come up here. Come on up here so everybody can see you. I wasn't too worried because she can't read yet, but Tara's done this for years and Tara couldn't read either. So I think that, but uh, no, 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 we can be so quiet. You know better than that. I want to thank you guys again for all you do. And uh, let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the pastors and for their families. Without them, the church would probably fall apart because they do so much behind the scenes and extra time and put efforts in, Lord. Because it's not because um, of selfishness, but it's because of the love they have for you. And Father, we love them and we are so thankful for them. And we pray that you would protect and watch over them for the next year, keep them safe, keep them healthy. And Father, again, we thank you for this church. And we thank you mostly all for the reason for the season, which is Jesus, your son, mm -hmm. for his birth. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Thank you all. Merry Christmas. And remember, on Sunday morning, regular service times, and Christmas just kind of continues because it's only two days away until Sunday. And God bless you. Remember to greet one another in a COVID-friendly wave. You can always give the, uh, the Wuhan wave there to everyone there. A blessed Christmas. God bless you. Thank you for joining us at home as well. Michael, are those your jeans? They're not. <laughs> I was told this morning you weren't doing pajamas. Oh no. And then everyone's wearing pajamas. And then <laughs>